بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم میں عرفان حسین اینڈ آئی ایم ہیو ود این انٹروڈکشن ٹو کنٹربری ٹریلس بائی جیفری چوسر دا کنٹربری ٹریلس ایز وی نو دیٹ از کریٹ ورک آف کریٹ جیفری چوسر لیٹ اس فرسٹ نو اباؤٹ دا بیک گراؤنڈ آف دا بیک گراؤنڈ ٹو دیز کنٹربری ٹریلس دیر واز اے گروپ آف پیپل in the prologue uh, of the uh, to the Canterbury Tales there was a group of people that gathers at Tobard Inn in Southwark uh, that is a town just south of London these people were attending intended to make a pilgrimage to the sh- great shrine of great Saint Tom's Becket at Canterbury and who was that Saint Becket uh, Saint Tom's Becket also called Tom's Becket or Tom's of London he was um, Uh, chancellor of england and an archbishop of canterbury during the reign of king henry ii his career was marked by a long quarrel with henry that ended with packet's murder in canterbury cathedral the pilgrims stayed at tabard inn as we uh, knew no, not it now that was hosted by a harry bailey who proposed on the journey that they should tell two tales and two on their way back It could have been 124, but actual number of stories is 24, only 24, not 124, uh, because Chaucer could not complete it and he was died in 1400. Let us have an introduction to these great pilgrims who are still alive in our hearts and in literature of English. In the prologue, six clerics are described in detail. These are the prioress, the monk, the friar, the seminar, the partner, and the parson. The other two, the second nun and the priest, are only mentioned here, but later they tell their own tales. So let us have a first introduction to these clergies. These are, as I just told you, a prioress, a friar, a monk, a seminar, a chaplain, a partner. out of these priors is considered to be one of the most important characters more one of the most impor- important pilgrims of uh, uh, these canterbury uh, pilgrims pilgrims and how chaucer gives an introduction what he says there also was a nun a prioress her way of smiling very simple and coy her courtly sort was only by saint loy and she was known as madam eglantine it is to be remembered that uh, she also uh, she is also known as madam England, eglantine this is a question that may be asked in objective type of any test the narrator described the prior as speaking french full fair and uh, uh, fatuously uh, it is to be noted that uh, in that time because it, it was an anglo norman period uh, it was also a symbol of having good status to speak french language and what he says that turning the most elegant manners and in general having the uh, contrefait cheer of court it means that she had all the great manners of that time in other words the prioress has all the mannerism of the aristocracy and takes great pains to align her etiquette and continence with the, the royal court and one paradox is uh, described by Chaucer what it says as a nun sh- as a nun she is expected to wear pearl beads but instead of it she wears a golden brooch with words amor or winchit omnia or love conquers all or love conquers all it it what it is that that it is a kind of paradox and contradiction the character of prioress that being a nun she should wear religious um, uh, ornaments uh, or symbols but uh, in contradiction to that she wears a uh, approach that shows a worldly love gesture and also there was a monk a monk there was one of the finest sort who rode the country hunting was his sport a manly man to be an abateable many a dainty horse he had in stable again chaucer makes a kind of satire here that a monk 
is considered to be have all uh, the religious practices in his life but what he he does that he he does hunting that is very much against the temperament of a uh, church monk and also he is having horses in and 20 horses in his uh, stable it means that he is enjoying a uh, luxurious life there and a friar the was a friar a wanton one and marry a limiter a very festive fellow in all our four orders there was none so mellow so glib with callant phrase and well toned speech there is a friar that who is very much apt in speaking and again that he is a kind of a wanton person he is a kind of person who loves to wander here and there and who loves to enjoy the festivity of the life that is again very much different very much in contradiction to the religious spirit three of the pilgrims are connected with land these are franklin reeve and plowman chaucer gave the introduction in, in uh, his prologue three military people are there one is knight and his son squire and yeoman and what he says about knight there was a knight a most distinguished man who from the day on which he first began to ride abroad and followed in chivalry truth honor generousness and courtesy he had done nobly in his sovereign's war and ridden into battle no man more as well in christian as in heathen places and he was honored for his noble graces he uh, talks about not in a very respectable way and he tells his um, great achievements his chivalry his uh, great uh, victories and his uh, services for his country that is son he had a son this is a, this is the son of knight the squire he had his son with him a fine young squire a lover and cadet a lad of fire with locks as curly as if they had been pressed he was some 20 years of age and cast in stature he was of a moderate length with wonderful agility and strength he had seen some service with the cavalry in flanders and in artois and picardy and had done valiantly in little space of time in hope to win his lady's case and he is a squire and he is a young man and chaucer did not portray him in some ideal way he portrays him just like how a young man could be that he loves to have adventures in life he loves to inspire uh, the ladies and he uh, he is uh, definitely a handsome guy then there are four persons who belong to the liberal professions uh, one is doctor uh, uh, an an ex- oxford cleric student of uh, oxford university and a lawyer and the fourth one is the poet himself these are the people who do not belong to religious um, uh, party but they are uh, from the liberal professions and also there are four people who are from trade these are the kind of businessmen one is merchant then a shipman then haberdasher and um, then the host of the inn that uh, we have given the introduction to host of the inn in, in the beginning there are also four pilgrims who belong to some kind of craftsmanship there is a wife of bath although she has other qualities and properties in the uh, matter of introduction as well but she is a seamstress a tailoress then a carpenter then a haberdasher then a tailor and uh, he gave a great introduction to this wife of bath what he says a worthy woman from beside bath city who was with us somewhat deaf which was a pity in making cloth she showed so great a bent she bettered those of yapres and rent these were yapres and uh, rent were great cities uh, famous in the middle ages for manufacturing fine uh, wood uh, wool fabrics she is seamstress and has taken three separate pilgrims uh, to pilgrimages to jerusalem she has also visited rome colin and other religious shrines this information tells me that her marriage marriages rather have left uh, the wife of bath as well the widow so keep 
and you might have noted that I am saying it wife, wife instead of wife. In actual, in in the original script, he writes his wife, not wife, although the meaning may be same. Then there are two seculars, one is Mansipal and other is Cook. So, this is the complete introduction to the uh, rather brief, but to all of the major characters of the uh, prologue to contemporary tales. And in our next video, we will have an introduction to the Canterbury Tales. What uh, that that is the introduction introduction to the tales of the Canterbury Tales. Till then, stay blessed. Thank you very much. God bless you.